It's time for round three, Isaac. Fight with your everlasting teeth. Or toot. So yeah, we just picked up an item that we unlocked in the very first video of the entire Let's Play. This will drop a giant monster on our enemies and I cannot wait until we get to use it. And just in case you couldn't tell what I was trying to do here, I was trying to lure the fat guy to walk in the fire, but... Oh, unfortunately, he's too smart to do that, so what do you know? But it's not as if this guy ever was a threat anyway. They're like the second least threatening enemy of the entire game. As for Wheel of Fortune, it will just spawn a slot machine out of thin air for you to play around with, but right now it's kind of useless considering that I have no coins whatsoever, so I'm just gonna hold on to it or until I get something better out of the deal. I mean, I could blow it up too, but right now it's not really worth it. Alright, here's a boss that we didn't see, and yeah, that's what Monstro Toots does. It deals a lot of damage on a boss, and for little bosses like this that don't really have a whole lot of health, it's perfect, because you can pretty much shorten the fight time by half. And there are some enemies, and most of the stuff that you'll see in the game will just end up dying in only one hit, so... All in all, it's a kind of worthwhile spacebar item. I like it. Also, interesting fact, the Jesus wine comes into carton boxes. You gotta be a religious man and save the environment, one day at a time. So to the right, we have what we call the curse rooms. In these rooms, you will often find red chests, and sometimes they will be protected by blue fire like that, but... Well, if you have a bomb, that's good for you, because then you can bomb it, and out of the deal, you'll mainly have a whole lot of soul hearts most of the time, in addition to what will be in the red chest itself. But if you're not, then you pretty much enter the curse room for nothing, and it should be noted that every single time you enter a curse room, you take damage. But you can enter a curse room without taking any damage if you fly. With that said, leaving the curse room itself will always damage you. Not entirely sure how it works, but that's the way it is. Also, while Jesus Juice is not a very good power up in overall, I gotta say, at least it still allows me to do enough damage to counterbalance the fact that Odd Mushroom lowered my damage. Alright, now it's time for a clash against the Titan. It's Monstro versus Monstro. Who will win? Okay, he barely won, but holy shit, he pretty much got a couple of scars there. Also, don't do like me. Getting hit by Monstro is embarrassing. You should never let that happen to you. And here's our most basic pickup of the game. The breakfast, we just get a heart container. As simple as that, as boring as that. Alright, time for something new. We have curses now. Essentially, what they do is, you can sometimes get them at the start of a floor and they will change the condition at which the level is being played. Curse of the Labyrinth means that there is now two floors tucked into this one. We have an extra large basement floor and now we have to deal with that. It's basically two levels into one, there's gonna be two treasure rooms for you to open, it's gonna be much wider. With that said however, there's still gonna be only one shop and one of the other type of rooms you might find into one level. And you're also gonna have two bosses at the end of the level too, because everything is doubled. Well, most of the things, but... Yeah, unfortunately, we're only going to be able to get one Devil Room out of the deal, so all in all, this is kind of a mixed blessing. So the item that we picked up in the challenge room was Guppy's Collar. Essentially, if we die, we have 50% chance to be revived with half a heart left. So if you're lucky enough, it could be eternal life, and if you're unlucky, well, it's just gonna spell the end of your playthrough for you. All in all, this is not something that you should really trust in, but pick it up anyway because it really doesn't have any kind of backside whatsoever, and it has another use. Yep, Sun card is always good. This is definitely something that you should swap a Wheel of Fortune for, more so considering that I still don't have anything to use it with. 
Killing all of the enemies and everything that you want is definitely a good thing. Yeah, we're gonna use it just for the sake of revealing the entire map as well. So, here we go, pooplets. It's time for you to die. Even though that you're so cute. Oh, what is this? A boss that's not envy for a change? Ah, finally. I'm starting to feel better about this entire game now, do you? And sometime whenever you kill him, you get Bob's Rotten Head. It's a complete downgrade compared to Monstro's Tooth, but I'm gonna pick it up anyway because it's still a fun item to use, so I'm definitely gonna carry it over. Okay, now we have a problem. We have no keys in order to open the two treasure rooms that Dolovol has, but thankfully fate has decided to put in a secret room right in the middle of them all. And basically, every room that leads to the secret room can be access. Just like that. So instead of using keys, we're gonna use our bombs. And we get chocolate milk. An item that, for some reason, has a lot of dislike in the thread. I have no clue why people dislike it, because honestly, it's pretty alright. I mean, you charge your shot, and it allows you to deal four times the damage. And with the odd mushroom, it means that I can charge my shots in... About the quarter of a second, or even... Okay, that's what Bob Brain does, but I somehow miss. It's like, the hit detection on this thing can be really fickle. I have no clue how this missed. And yeah, bombs are key is a pill effect that, whenever you swallow this pill, your bomb counter will become the key counter, and the key counter will become the bomb counter. Essentially, you swap your number of bomb for the ones of keys and vice versa. Sometime it can really screw you over, and some other time it can really help you. Right now, it did absolutely nothing because I have none of anything. But yeah, with chocolate milk right now, I can insta-kill almost any enemy that I meet, so all in all, I really don't see why people have anything bad to say about this item. With that said, those walking skulls can take a lot more damage, so I'm gonna line them up and wait to strike with Bob's brain. Oh my god, <laughs> is this eventually gonna end? <laughs> can this nightmare where I keep missing all of the time with Bob's brain stop, please? Alright, I guess we're just gonna donate some money. And we've upgraded the store. From now on, all of the stores that we're gonna see will have at least three items for sale. Most of the time they had two, and every once in a blue moon they had three. Now at least they'll always have three. And as we donate more and more money, the store will keep upgrading in order to allow you to have even more items. But yeah, I can deal damage so quickly now. And with only one projectile to hand, there's also... Okay, now that's how you use Bob's Rotten Head. Now that was a perfect clean sweep. And we picked up the Joker card. It's a mysterious card, but it's also pretty straightforward at the same time. It teleports you to the Devil Room of this level. And additionally, it even allows you to visit Devil Rooms that you normally couldn't even be able to access. Like for instance in Basement 1, because there will never be a Devil Room that will spawn in this one level, but it will still exist. So this card will be your ticket in order to get it. Also, something that I kind of noticed with some of the bosses that have been introduced in Rebirth is how they tend to not move that much in overall, but this guy can move whenever he decides. That was the really tricky move that I talked about in the one earlier video. That quick stun. This is his most deadly attack by far. The rest of his stuff is very easy to see coming, but that stomp is really quick. You need to react fast. And yeah, we get a Magic 8 Ball and... Oh yes, another Sun card! So, yeah, normally you'll want to save your Joker cards if the Devil Room doesn't appear, but I want to save my Sun card for the next floor, so I'm just gonna go right here in the Devil Room in order to take Satan's deal of the day. Two great items in overall. I'm gonna talk about them a little bit more in detail later. Right now we have another boss to fight because it's an Excel floor, so there's two bosses. And that's another new boss, Mega Ball. Also, do not confound with Mega Man. For some reason, the first time that I saw his name, I really thought it was Mega Man. 
Okay, it's a good thing that there was a devil room because otherwise my rewards for this floor have been pretty meh. So, Ceremonial Robe deals one extra damage, and in addition to that, it gives you three black cards. So there's never a reason to ever skip this item. It's so good. And Goated is also another wonderful item, because it guarantees you Devil Rooms on every single floor. So that's the best thing you could have. Also, that was a complete waste, because honestly, okay... I was gonna say it was a complete waste because I needed it for the night, but hey, Lemon Party is here in order to help me. This is the most devastating pill effect in the entire game because it just creates this entire ocean of piss for your enemies to die in. And yeah, 48 hour energies refill the entirety of your spacebar item, plus giving you a couple of extra batteries along the way. Alright, so we have two bombs here, and we're gonna use them well in order to nuke everybody here. Thanks to Waga for letting me know that you could destroy all of these guys with only two bombs instead of nuking them individually, because I swear at one time I tried doing that, but I failed, so I just assumed that it wouldn't work. Also, yeah, for the most part, sacrificial rooms are almost always worthless, but always play a visit in them at least once, just in order to see if there's at least like a soul heart, a black heart, or whatever. There's usually hearts to be found into these rooms, so even if you do not intend to throw yourself on the spikes in order to get chest, at least you can have some hearts. Also, the reason why there's now blue flies all around us is because of the infestation item that we got on the other floor earlier. Essentially, every time we take damage, there are flies that appear right around us, and they deal twice the damage that we do. Oh yeah, that's also another thing you can do with the chocolate milk. Instead of shooting a bunch of slower, powerful projectiles, you can also mash the attack button just in order to unleash a flurry of quick, weak shots. Yeah, sometimes you can hedge yourself between the spikes diagonally if you want to get chests that are trapped or protected by spikes, but it's kind of hard to do. Honestly, this is not something that I recommend doing early on, and most of the time you probably take damage, and spikes always deal a full heart of damage no matter where you are in the game. Alright, so it's time to see if there's anything good in these calls. Oh, two cards. I guess it's not too bad. And yeah, this trinket is not very good, unfortunately. So yeah, the stars will allow us to save on a key because it teleports you to the treasure room of the floor. And yeah, that basically allowed us to get in for free. So the strength card boosts your stats for the duration of one room. Honestly, there are better cards than it in order to boost your stats. For instance, the Devil card will raise your damage way more, but it's still not a bad card. Honestly, if you have nothing else to bring along, you might as well just bring it. Oh good, the donation box is already broken. How many coins did I put into it? Something like five or six? I mean, do you want my money or not? Decide yourself, shopkeeper. You're an embarrassment. Oh, thank god for that spiky block, because if it wasn't there, my rotten head would have missed the target entirely. So yeah, this cute little fellow with the mark of the devil on his forehead is loot. He spawns a whole lot of flies, and he's the only boss of the entire game that uses an outside contraption in order to make your fight more complicated, aka the spiky block, but it's honestly not that big of a deal. Alright, so that's that's an incredible devil room, because we have this item here that doesn't do much, but hey, we're gonna take this other item, the dead cat, and now, by the combined power of dead cat, guppy's collar, and guppy's paw, we become guppy, a flying dead cat of death and destruction. Whenever this happens, well... You become the most fearsome person of the entire game, and this happens whenever you manage to collect three items that are related to Guppy in a single playthrough. 
And by the way, doing this achievement unlocks yet another guppy item, so now we have even more chances in the future to have the guppy achievement. Or guppy form, as everybody calls it. So, what does guppy form do? Well, not only you fly, but every single time you do damage, you release a small blue fly that will attack your enemies. And this is like that all of the time. This makes you ridiculously powerful. Although, for jerks like these, you will still need some finesse in order to be able to deal with them. As for me, my finesse is just a giant bomb heading in your face. Yeah, I can fly, so I can do whatever I want into the big red goop. And here we have a much better trinket than the one that we had previously. This one allows you to get a bunch of different effects relating on room, and one of them include the compass. I'm not entirely sure how having a compass has something to do with mushrooms, but hey, whatever. I'm just gonna take it. So yeah, now that I have guppy form, I'm gonna spam the small attack a whole lot because this is how I'm going to generate the most damage in order to attack the enemy because I can just create an endless onslaught of flies in order to attack my opponents. Right now I have no hard containers again, but hey, at least this time I have no item which will destroy me in the long run. <coughs> Bob's brain. <coughs> And this way we shall be set for an easy victory. Oh, alright. Here's something that will help us even better. Infamy allows you to sometime negate the damage that you receive from certain attacks. Not entirely sure how it's decided. I think it's purely random. But yeah, all in all, it's alright. Right now, this is the kind of room that might have been trickier if... Ow, oh, tears down. Now, instead of shooting tears at the speed of light, I'm only going to shoot them at the speed of sound. Oh well, we'll deal with it. Ah, and we finally have a good excuse to get rid of Bob's rotten head. This one item here, Mom's bra, apart from the gross out factor, which is very evidence here, well, it stuns all of the enemies for a couple of seconds, which gives me more than enough liberty to nuke them out of existence. And alright, we have plenty of bombs, so... Yeah, let's just bomb the hell out of everything and unlock some more stuff in the process. You unlock the lucky rock whenever you bomb a hundred rocks. And the skull rocks are perfect for achieving this objective because of all of the goodies you can get inside. Yeah, you can get enemies, but hey, you also get uh, black hearts every once in a while. So the hermit card allows us to go outright to the shop without any kind of keys whatsoever. Yeah, bombs or key is not going to be very useful considering that I have six of each. Right now the pill will do absolutely nothing. Yep, it will keep doing nothing! <laughs> so let's just juggle along everything that we have in the way of cards. Yeah, four of diamonds might be useful. I mean, it's gonna double her money. The moon allows you to go to the secret room. Yeah, let's just use a tooth diamond right here. And I'll use the world in the next floor in order to be able to see where the secret room and whatever will be hidden at next. Also, apparently I was so confident at my card choice that I completely overlooked the card. Oh well. Alright, it's time for you to be vanquished by your own arsenal, mom. Yeah, right now I should have just spammed the fire attack because just doing those slow charge shots with Guppy doesn't really accomplish much. I will get something out of the deal whenever I'll mash the attack button in order to create as many flies as I can. So apart from creating minions, mom's other attack is to try to stomp you with her giant foot. She always starts out the fight by stomping the middle of the room. Not entirely sure why, but hey, sometime if there is a blue rock that's hidden and you can't find it, well, mom will gladly unravel it for you. And we unlock a new item because we collected three mom items in the same playthrough. And this is probably the best one of the lot. I mean, the one that I picked up is pretty meh, but the one that I just got or the one that I just unlocked, will be a pretty fantastic one. I cannot wait until you finally see it. So now we have access to this new room, and now we have the choice of four items. I wonder which one we will take. And the moment that you made your choice, you better be ready to fight for your decision, because 
Now, we're in the part of the game that is called the boss rush. And it's called that way for a reason. Now, we have to fight our way through 15 waves of a whole assortment of the bosses of the game. And this is as exhausting as you think it is. With some practice, it's honestly not that hard. But no matter how you look at it, it will remain a pretty long and taxing process. And if you go there without any kind of good weaponry or loadout, you're gonna be stuck here for a while. Now, things are probably going to get a little bit overwhelming because right now you haven't seen pretty much 80% of the bosses that we're gonna fight. So I'm probably just gonna talk... Wait, what the fuck is up with the red hearts in the corner? What happened there? I mean, I know I have Gimpy, which makes enemies sometimes drop half hearts whenever they die, but what the hell actually caused that to happen? I mean, too bad that I don't have a certain other item, because holy shit, I will be swimming in blue hearts by now. But yeah, the boss rush challenge is also pretty good in order to completely round out your kill count, because... There's other unlocks that you can get by killing every boss in the game, so that will be her first step in order to be able to... Oh, okay, and I guess with all of the random red poop which is exploding in the room, it also counted toward my poop destruction quota, which unlocked the item that you get for destroying a whole lot of poop. Warning, it sucks. But yeah, the red poop right now is kind of a double-edged sword, because... Well, even if you fly and you go over it, it will hurt you, but red poop will also hurt the enemies, so that can end up working well against you for certain cases. Hell, there are times where it can almost insta-kill certain bosses because they end up being trapped in them for some unknown reason. Yeah, you remember this fellow from Super Meat Boy? That's Chad, and yeah, he's already dead, unfortunately. So once you reach Chubb as well as Gertie, the good news is you're halfway done with the boss rush. But the bad news is the worst is yet to come. Honestly, we haven't fought any of the hard fights of the boss rush so far. I mean, apart from like the Carrion Queen, which is the thing that dropped all of the red poop everywhere, most of this have been pretty easy, but this is the part where it can get pretty tough. Because those two bosses are huge sacks of hit points. Monstro 2, as well as Gish, which is another character from a Henman McMillan game. Well, these two certainly don't mess around. I mean, Gish is an easy boss, but he has a lot of health. And Monstro 2 just have these huge lasers that he can shoot off screen, which can catch you off guard. So, all in all, he can definitely trick you. This, however, feels like the respite round. Yeah. This round just went that quickly, because those two bosses are really, really weak. And good news, this round is also easy, because, yeah, these guys just randomly roam around the entire place mindlessly, and they don't do anything very special. The white art that have been dropped is an eternal heart, and basically, if you finish a level and you have at least one half of an eternal heart, it'll become a brand new heart container. And it's a good thing because, hey, this is where the round gets hard again. Those two bosses also don't mess around. We have the Mask of Infamy, which is the enemy which is still living. One of the worst bosses in the game because you have to hit it in the back. It's really, really fast. And finally, there's this other remote part that you have to kill first. All in all, I hate this boss. It's annoying to fight and it's not really interesting either. So yeah, remember how come in our last playthrough we unlocked the Horsemen of the Apocalypse? Well, here they are! I'm surprised that we didn't even see them in this one playthrough. Most of the time, when they become unlocked, I start seeing them immediately. So, all in all, this was kind of an anomaly. So, the only remaining Horseman right now is War, and he's running around the pool. Yeah, sometime war will just leave in order to bomb the entire place with troll bomb, but with a room this big, can he really be cons- Oh, and he landed right in the spikes, that's a good job. And here it is, it's the last wave. We have the Fallen as well, then the Headless Horseman, which is another bonus horseman that have been added to the game. 
He can randomly replace any of the horsemen fight in the game, and he can be really annoying, but right now we're not really gonna see him much. He's gonna die, yeah, right now. And there you have it! It's the boss rush! We've survived, and as a reward, we unlock something, and we get another new item for free. Judging by this info box at the side, well, Libro is definitely the most interesting zodiac symbol of the entire game. It definitely changes your entire gameplay experience because it takes all of the stat points that you have in damage, range, movement speed, and tears firing rate and splits them evenly. And sometimes this can lead to very interesting stuff, but right now we don't really have that much in the way of any of those stats, so right now Libra unfortunately doesn't do anything much, but I believe that we've gained a slight increase in damage, because apart from the Jesus Juice, which afterward got pretty much negated by the Odd Mushroom, we pretty much had close to no damage up, but it pretty much took all of the firing speed that we had and put them in damage, and all of those things, no. <laughs> yeah, this is how ridiculous Guppy is. Anything that you face, it will instantly die, providing that you have a semi-decent damage stat. Yeah, this is something that I can be thankful of the Libra for, because honestly, I don't think this fight will have went so fast otherwise. Yeah, I could paralyze those things, but I'm really just going to save my mom's bro whenever I'll face item that can shoot a lot of projectiles. Yeah, not these enemies, because yeah, you just need to stand over... I'm not entirely sure, I think they may be the gastric fluids or something, but yeah, if you stand over there, the globlins can no longer hurt you. Okay, these things do not shoot, but I might as well just stop everything, just so that I can split everything at my own leisure. They call me the Lord of the Flies for a reason. And yeah, by the way, Lord of the Flies is another form that you can have in this game, but it's nowhere near as awesome than this, unfortunately. I'm kind of surprised that it's even a thing because, well, you'll see at some point whenever I'll finally do it. Actually, I did that on the very first game of Isaac that I've ever played, and after that I'm not even sure if I even noticed that I had it into my future playthrough. That's how vanilla and boring it is. Also, holy shit, that's a lot of stuff. This is why you should never ignore gold chests, unless that, well, opening the gold chest means that you'd be unable to access a treasure room or something. Treasure rooms are always more important. So, we have a new enemy here, but it's a little bit shy. Sometimes it takes a while in order for it to show its face off. Essentially, oh, alright, now that's a perfect room for mom's bro, because holy shit, fuck all of these projectiles. All of these tumors and those really weird shape head that dig underground, they can pretty much go to hell. Also, don't ask me why I didn't even bother using my world card, I guess I'm saving it for the next floor? But hey, that's gonna be a thing, I guess. Hey, now Gertie's a mama! Instead of being a pile of gooey stuff, now... I'm not even sure what the hell this is even supposed to be, she sure is one crazy mama. Oh yes, thank you, box. Yeah, the box drops one of every type of object, and the one trinket that it spawns is one of the best trinkets of the entire game. Cancer is just that awesome, because it really fastens your ability to shoot tears by a whole lot. I'm going to be showing this off as soon as I use my moon card in order to go to the secret room in order to get two keys. At this point, I doubt I'd have use for 20 keys, but... Hey, you never know, maybe we'll get one of those key beggars after all. Yeah. It basically takes about one tenth of a second for us to charge our tears. This is how ridiculous cancer is. It's just the best disease you can have in this game. But not in real life, unfortunately. So, here it is, it's the final floor. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that I went through all of this without even talking about what this place is, but yeah, it's the womb and sometime replaced by the Utero. Essentially, this is where our game will end, and as an added challenge, whenever you get- Oh, pff, tears up, thanks, I really needed that. 
I mean, I can machine gun my tears out at the speed that I want, so why will I even need tears up anymore? Oh, hello for spoiling us another secret room greed. Thank you very much. But yeah, what I wanted to say about the womb is that once you reach this point in the game, every enemy, hazard or anything will deal a full heart of damage. So this is why things will get harder as we get to this one place in the game. And most of the rooms happen to be very crowded as well. I mean, look at the amount of poop that we have over here. I mean, I'm not totally sure that having that much poop into your Aetherus or whatever will be healthy. Oh my god, how did I get hit by a tentacle? Alright, come on, it's time to resign. This playthrough or this LP is not suitable under my hands anymore. How can I get hit by that? I got too much in a hurry because of the freaking mom hands. Because if they grab you, not only they deal a full heart of damage, but they also bring you back all the way to the beginning of the floor. So all in all, this is not something that you want to happen. Honestly, if you will dispark in the womb with not the loadout that I have, it definitely will be a much trickier place. I mean, these little lumpy heads, however, are the worst. You want to kill them as soon as you can, but it's almost impossible to do because then they just dig under and you're unable to do anything about it. Also, holy shit, that's a lot of money. And yeah, we got 55 coins, and by doing so, we managed to unlock Kane. A bomb celebration is in order for this good man. And with all of our newly found wealth, it's time to play the shell game. There are two reasons in order to play the shell game. One is that we get a special item if we are perseverant enough and we can eventually win because our luck is completely rotten right now. I mean, am I finally gonna get something out of you? But yeah, essentially, as you play this game, you can get either currency, bombs, coins, and there's also a special item that you can have out of the deal. And this is what I'm trying to do here, but right now I'm also just running my money, because if you play any of the game with him, you'll also unlock another trinket that you can use. But yeah, I have took the liberty to speed that up, because you don't really want to see all of that in real time. But yeah, you can also get health out of him. Honestly, he's kind of a good source of a lot of items. It's just that you need to be perseverant enough to be able to get them. And yeah, that's the special item that we can get. Yeah, it was surely worth all of the money that we spent. Essentially, we want a pile of poop to put on our head. But yeah, this allows us to become the friend of all flies. Now, flies will no longer be hostile toward us, and some of the most dangerous brands of flies in the game will be slower of attack. And yeah, the gold key acts as a master key for this entire floor. Opening doors, chests, and everything no longer cost us a key. Oh shit, it's mom's art. It's the final boss. It's time for her to show us what she's capable of. Time for time freeze! And... Fly infestation, I guess. Yeah, that was pretty pathetic. <laughs> so yeah, that was the final boss. We are done with this playthrough, but let's see what's in this door first. Yep, it's our good old buddy Satan, but now he doesn't have any item for us. He only has one trap door, leading further and further down. But what about our big reward for finishing the game? Ah, don't worry, we have it here. Welcome to Sheol, a place of darkness where all of the dead go, no matter how good they were or were not at life. It doesn't matter what kind of a person you were, you will end up here. There is no salvation possible for any of you. Oh hey, at Free Tail! Hell yes, I'm so happy to be here! But yeah, essentially Sheol is pretty much uh, the Hebrew way of talking about the underworld. And yeah, unfortunately, our mom's broad does not allow us to defeat uh, skeletons of doom. But hey, we can still poison them because we have the virus, which was an item that allows us to deal poison damage to anything that we touch. But we take a whole heart of damage whenever we get hit, so that's definitely not a thing that we want. 
And yeah, hangman. Yeah, it allows you to fly for one room, but I can already fly. I guess I look cool with a disembodied head, though. But yeah, she all definitely had an interesting history into uh, the good old writings, because in very early writings, it was just considered a place of the dead. After that, it just served as a place for the righteous and the unrighteous to rest in, and finally it was just labeled as a place where only the wicked must stay. I guess right now we're part of the wicked ones. And yeah, we have the... Isaac Knights, which are definitely way more annoying because they're way faster. Honestly, they're pretty hard to deal with. And this is why I'm really happy to be able to freeze them in my tracks. Okay, so I guess am I gonna be able to unlock Kane a second time despite blowing something like 20 coins at the shell game? But as far as Isaac go, this is one of the two alternate branches where your game can end. Eventually, we're gonna have to go here in order to finish the game, but now because we got a devil room at the end of the game, now it's pretty much a bonus round. We can pretty much gain some extra progress on the game by going to places that we normally would not be able to access. And Sheol as a place can be very treacherous. It's got a lot of boss encounters, there were some really brutal room layouts, like the one, for instance, where there were four rotating eyeballs with laser, all coupled with the enemies that you can only hurt whenever they feel like getting hurt, so all in all, they can make for very interesting challenges. Generally, you'll want to rush to the end of Sheol as fast as possible because there's not that much of a point to explore it because, as you've noticed already, in the womb and every other floor after that, there were no treasure rooms. So, all in all, it pretty much just becomes a race in order to get to the end of the floor. But sometimes you can find hidden items along the way, so you always want to explore if you feel confident enough in your abilities to survive. And I feel confident enough, thank you very much. It's always worth it to try and open a chest into such a room when you're well harmed. Right here, we're just having the chillest of time in Satan's Hideout. And here's the only mini boss that's not team after one of the seven sins it's Ultra Pride, all styled after the original developers of Flash Isaac. And as a reward, you get this trinket. Essentially, it replaces all of the chests with red chests. Its usability is pretty questionable, in my opinion. And yup, we've reached that point in the game. After all of the deals that we've got out of Satan, it's time to finally fight him in order to put an end to everything. What does this got to do with our mom? Who knows, but we're on a mission here. So the first phase of Satan always starts with him summoning a Fallen, and after that he finally consents to fighting you. He's got pretty interesting bullet patterns to dodge. And no, he's not dead, now it's on to phase 3. Now it's time for the Mega Mom Stomping Show Festival. Yeah, he's already dead because I'm pretty sure I had a whole lot of flies to ram in him. And yeah, this little dude behind me supplied me with soul hearts this entire journey by picking up the red hearts that were laying on the floor. After this pretty somber ending, we just get the credits again. Nothing have changed, but we got a new item out of the deal, and we unlock Judas. Yeah, in order to unlock Judas in Rebirth, instead of just finishing the game once, you have to kill Satan, so it might take you some extra time in order to get him into this game. But now it's time to see the other ending that we skip.
Yeah, that relates to the new character that we unlocked earlier, Eden. You unlock him after getting your first victory against Mom's Art. And well, he's a randomly generated character. We're probably gonna have some more fun with him. So we almost have the entire cast. We only are missing one person in the lot, which is Magdalene. And we unlock her by having seven heart containers at a time. So that will be the aim of our next playthrough. Which means that for the next playthrough, I will play with someone that has three heart containers. And there's two options to us. Samson or Lazarus. At the time, people asked that I play as Samson, so he will be the person that we'll play as next time, so see you later. You may believe that you have escaped me, Isaac, but the numbers never lie. I will be back. I will be back, and I will ruin your wonderful life, full of marvelous chests that will help you in your journey. The world as it is will never be the same, and I, the son of Satan, will rejoice forever! <laughs> Ha 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 ha!